Blessed is our God, always now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to thee, O Christ, O God of hope, glory to thee, O the King. O comfort of the spirit of truth, whatever we're present and fill us all things. <laughs> we try to every good midst of our life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us of every sin and every soul's a good one. Peace of light, let us put over the God of the mighty, holy, one of mercy in us, for the God of the many, holy, one of mercy in us, for the God, holy, mighty, holy, one of mercy in us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, for found and unto the ages of ages, and then all holy trinity have mercy in us, Lord, be gracious in our sins, Master, pardon our iniquities, holy one, visit in our infirmities, for the name's sake, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, for found and unto the ages of ages, amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, for now and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O come, let us worship and fall down before our King God. <clears throat> Welcome come, let us wish for Father before Christ our King God. Welcome come, let us wish for Father before Him, Christ the King our God. When I call upon Thee, O God, in my righteousness, thou dost hearken unto me, and mine affliction thou hast enlarged me, I have compassion in me, and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will you be slow of heart? Why do you love vanity and seek after falsehood? Know also that the Lord hath made wonders his holy one. The Lord will hearken unto me when I cry unto him. Be angry and sin not. Feel compunction upon your bed for what you say in your hearts. Sacrifice a sacrifice of righteousness and hope in the Lord. Many say who will show unto us good things. The light of thy countenance, the Lord have been signed of, in sign of honest. I was giving gladness to my heart from the fruit of the wheat, wine, and oil. Are they multiplied in peace in the same place? I shall lead me down to sleep for thou, Lord, alone is maybe to dwell in hope. O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, nor chase me in thy wrath. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am weak. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are troubled, and my soul is troubled greatly. But thou, Lord, how long? Turn to me again, O Lord, deliver my soul. Save me for thy mercy's sake, for in death there is none that is mindful of thee, and in Hades who will confess thee. I toiled in my groaning every night while I watched my bed with tears, while I water my couch through wrath as my eye become troubled. I have grown old among all mine enemies. Depart from me, all ye that work vanity, for the Lord hath heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord hath heard my supplication, the Lord hath received my prayer. Let all mine enemies be greatly put to shame and be troubled. Let them be turned back and speedily greatly put to shame. How long, O Lord, will thou utterly forgive me? How long will thou turn thy face away from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul with grievings in my heart by day and by night? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Look upon me, hear me, O Lord my God, and light mine eyes, lest at any time I sleep unto death, lest at any time mine enemy say I prevailed against him. They that afflict me will rejoice if I am shaken, but as for me, I have hoped in thy mercy. My heart will rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord who is my benefactor, and I will chant in the name of the Lord Most High. Look upon me. O oh Lord my God, and light in mine eyes, lest at any time I sleep unto death, lest at any time mine enemies say I prevailed against them. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, but now and even unto the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, but now and even unto the ages of ages. Amen. And to thee, O Lord, have I lifted up my soul, O my God, and thee have I trusted. Let me never be put to shame, nor let mine enemies not be to scorn. Yea, let none that wait on thee be put to shame. Let them be ashamed with your lawless without a cause. Make thy ways, O Lord, known unto me, and teach me in thy paths. Lead me in thy truth, and teach truth, and teach me, for thou art God my Savior, for in thee have I waited all the day long. Remember thy compassion, O Lord, and thy mercies, for they are from everlasting. The sins of my youth, my ignorances, remember not according to thy mercy. Remember thou me for the sake of thy goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will he set a law for them that sin and away. He will guide the meek in judgment, he will teach the meek his ways. All the ways of the Lord are mercy and truth, and of them that seek after his covenant and his testimonies. For the sake of thy name, O Lord, be gracious unto my sin, for it is great. Who is a man that feareth the Lord? He will set him along the way which he hath chosen. His soul shall dwell among good things, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The Lord is the strength of them that fear him, and his covenant shall be manifested unto them. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he it is. I will draw my feet out of the snare. Look upon me and hear me, O Lord my God. For Look upon me and have mercy on me, for I am one only begotten and poor. The afflictions of my heart are multiplied, bring me out from my necessities. Behold my loneliness, my toil, and forgive all my sins. Look upon mine enemies, for they are multiplied, and with an unjust hatred have they hated me. Keep my soul and rescue me. Let me not be put to shame, for I have hoped in thee. The innocent and the upright have cleaved unto me, for I have waited on thee, O Lord, redeem Israel, O God, out of all his afflictions. In thee, O Lord, have I hoped. Let me not be put to shame in the age to come. In thy righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Bow down and near to me. Make haste to rescue me. Be thou unto me, a God, to defend me in a house of refuge, to save me for my strength and my refuge art thou, and for thy namesake will thou guide me and nourish me. Thou wilt bring me out of the snare which I have hid for which I have hid for me, for thou art my defender, O Lord, into thy hands will I commit my spirit, thou wilt redeem me, O Lord God of truth. 
Thou hast hated them that cling to empty vanities, but I have hoped in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad in thy mercy, for thou hast regarded my lowliness and hast saved my soul out of necessities and has not shut me up in the hands of enemies and and thou hast set my feet in a spacious place have mercy on me O lord for i am afflicted my eyes troubled with anger as also my soul and my belly for my life is spent with griefs so and my grief and my years with groanings my strength hath grown weak in poverty and my bones are troubled i am become a reproach among all mine enemies and greatly for my neighbors also and a fear to mine acquaintances they that saw me without fled from me i am forgotten by the heart like a dead man i am become like a broken vessel for I have heard the reproach of, of many that dwell round about when they assemble together against me, they had devised to take away my life. But as for me, I have hoped in thee, O Lord, I said, Thou art my God in thy hands of my lots. Deliver me from the hands of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. Make thy face to shine upon thy servants. Save me in thy mercy. O Lord, let me not be put to shame, for I have called upon thee. Let the ungodly be put to shame and let them be brought down into Hades. Speechless be the deceitful lips which speak iniquity against the righteous man with arrogance and contempt. How great is the multitude of thy goodness, O Lord, which shall hid from them that fear thee, which shall wrought for them that hope in thee before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in the secrecy of thy presence from the disturbance of men. Thou shalt shelter them in the tabernacle from contradiction of tongues. Blessed is the Lord, for he hath made his mercy wondrous in a fortified city. But as for me, I said in my next to see, I am cast away from the presence of thine eyes. Therefore hast thou heard the voice of my supplication when I cried unto thee, O love ye the Lord, are ye his saints, for the Lord requireth truth, and unto them that act with exceeding pride render, rendereth them their due. Be ye manful, and let your heart be strengthened, O ye that hope in the Lord. He that dwelleth in the help of the Most High shall abide in the shelter of the God of heaven. He shall say unto the Lord, Thou my helper, my refuge, he is my God, and I will hope in him. For he shall deliver thee from the snare of the hunters and from every troubling word. With his shoulders will he overshadow thee, and under his wings shall thou have hope. With the shield with this truth encompass thee. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the error that, error that fly by day, nor for the thing that walk in the darkness, nor for the mishap of a demon at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but in thee shall not come nigh. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold, and thou shalt see the reward of sinners, for thou, Lord, art my hope. Thou madest the most high thy refuge, no evil shall come nigh thee, and no scourge shall draw nigh unto thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. On their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Upon the ash from Basculus shalt thou tread, and thou shalt trample upon a lion and dragon. For he has set his hope on me, and I will deliver him. I will shelter him, because he hath known my name. He shall cry unto me, and I will hearken unto him. I am with him in affliction, and I will rescue him and glorify him. With length of days will I satisfy him, and I will show my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. For now, and now, and to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. For now, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. God is with us, no ye nations and be vanquished, for God is with us. Give ear even unto the utmost part of the earth, for God is with us. For though ye should prevail again, yet again shall ye be vanquished. For God is with us. And whatsoever counsel ye shall take, the Lord shall bring it to naught. For God is with us. And, what's for, and whatsoever word ye speak, it shall not abide in you. For God is with us. And the fear of your ways shall not fear, neither shall ye be troubled. For God is with us. But we will sanctify the Lord our God, and he shall be our fear, for God is with us. And if I put my trust in him, he shall be my sanctification, for God is with us. Yea, I will put my trust in him, and I shall be saved through him, for God is with us. Behold, I and the children which God had given me, for God is the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light, for God is with us. We that dwell in the land and shadow of death, a light shall shine upon us, for God is with us. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, for God is with us. Whose government is come upon his shoulder, for God is with us. And of his peace there is no end, for God is with us. And his name shall be called the angel of great castle, for God is with us. Wonderful counselor, 
for God is with us. Almighty God, he that hath authority, the Prince of Peace, for God is with us. The Father of the age to come, for God is with us. Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, for God is with us. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages, amen. For God is with us. God is with us. No, ye nations and be that this evening and night may be without sin, O Savior, and save me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, having gone through the day, I glorify thee, O Master. Grant me, I beseech thee, that this evening and night may be without stumbling, O Savior, and save me, both now and ever unto the ages of ages of men. Being come to the end of the day, I praise thee, O Holy One. Grant me, I beseech thee, that this evening and night may be without temptation, O Savior, and save me. The bodiless natures, the cherubim, glorify and praise thee with unceasing hymn. And the six-winged beings, the seraphim, do extol and exalt thee with endless voice. The whole company of the angelic host, thou acclaim and praise thee with thrice holy song. For the Father art thou from before all things, who hast also thy Son co-beginningless. With the equally honored spirit of life, thou dost show for the church. O thou, O holy Virgin, Mother of God, and ye servants and witnesses of the word, holy choirs of prophets and martyred saints, who are crowned with the gift of immortal life, intercede ye with fervor in our behalf, for we are in much suffering and great distress. So that saved from the error of the evil one, we may cry out and chant, chant the angelic song. Holy, 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 thrice holy Lord, have mercy and save us. Amen. I believe one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, <laughs> and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten, begotten of the Father before all ages. Light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not made, being of one essence with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from the heavens. It was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. It was crucified for us in a Pontius Pilate, suffered and was buried. And arose again on the third day according to the scriptures and ascended into the heavens and sitteth at the right hand of the Father and shall come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. His kingdom and shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father with the Father and the Son, together as worshipped and glorified and speak by the prophets in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. <coughs> I confess one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the age to come. Panagia de spina teotoke, preseve perimonto na martolo. O a holy lady Theotokos, intercede for us sinners. O holy lady Theotokos, intercede for us sinners. O all ye heavenly hosts of holy angels and archangels, Intercede for us sinners. A severani dinamis ton agion angelon ki archangelon presvesate iperimon ton amartolon. O Saint John, prophet and forerunner and baptist of our Lord Jesus Christ, intercede for us sinners. Agioni profita ge prodra me ke baptista tu kiri hui mon Isu Christu presvesate iperimon ton amartolon. O holy glorious. O holy, glorious apostles, prophets, and martyrs, and all saints, intercede for us sinners. Agi endoxia apostoli profitike martyres, que pandes agi presversate iperimonto na martolo. O righteous and God-bearing Father, shepherds and teachers of the world, intercede for us sinners. O si theofori patere simon pimenes, que didas credis icumenis, presversate iperimonto na martolo. 
a holy hierarch, John the wonder worker, intercede for us sinners. O, in, o invincible and indissoluble and divine power of the honor and life-giving cross, Forsake not us sinners. O God, be gracious unto us sinners. O God, be gracious unto us sinners and have mercy on us. Peace be to us for the Holy God, the Holy Mighty, Holy Mortal of Mercy in us, for the God, Holy Mighty, Holy Mortal of Mercy in us, for the God, Holy Mighty, Holy Mortal of Mercy in us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, but now and ever and to be the ages of ages of men. O Holy Trinity, have mercy in us, Lord, be gracious in our sins, Master of heart and our iniquities, Holy One, visit me, heal our infirmities for the name's sake. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, but now and ever and to the ages of ages of men. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. And like in mine eyes, O Christ God, lest I sleep, uh, lest at any time I sleep unto death, lest at any time my enemy say I have prevailed against him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, and be thou my soul's help. O God, for I pass through the midst of many snares, deliver me out of them, and save me, O good one, since thou art the friend of man, both now and over unto the ages of ages of men, seeing that we have no boldness on account of our many sins. Do thou beseech him that was born in thee, O virgin, say, O Tocos, for the supplication of a mother, availeth much to win the master's favor, disdain not the prayers of sinners, most august one, for merciful is he, and mighty to save. He that deigned to suffer for our sake. Lord of mercy, 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 through the prayers of Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy us and save us. Amen. <coughs> Lord, O Lord, that has delivered us from every error that flieth by day. Do thou deliver us also from everything that walk in the darkness, except the lifting up of our hands as an evening sacrifice. And vouchsafe us blamelessly to pass through the course of the night, being untempted of evils, and deliver us from every troubling and fear which cometh to us of the devil. Grant compunction to our souls and to our thoughts, mindfulness of the Inquisition and the terrible and just judgment. Nail down our flesh with the fear of the immortified members which are upon the earth that through the quiet of sleep we may rejoice in the vision of thy judgments, and remove from us every shameful imagining and hurtful desire, and raise us up at the hour of prayer, established in faith and advancing in thy commandments. By the grace and the goodness of thy only begotten Son, with whom thou art blessed, together with thine all holy, good, and life creating spirit, now and ever to the ages of ages. God, according to the mercy and according to the multitude of thy compassions, blood of my transgression, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse my sin, for I know my iniquity and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done this evil before thee, that thou mightest be justified in thy words and prevail in our judge. For behold, I was conceived in iniquity, sin and sins, and my mother bear me. For behold, I was loved truth, a hidden and secret thing, so the wisdom also made manifest unto me. Thou shalt sprinkle me with this, so then I shall be made clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow, and thou shalt make me to hear joy and gladness, and wounds to be humble, they shall rejoice. Turn thy face away from my sins, blot out all mine iniquities, create me a clean heart, O God, and read your right spirit within me, cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy holy spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation, and with thy governing spirit establish me, I shall teach transgressors thy ways, and the ungodly children back unto thee, deliver me from blood guiltiness. O God, the God of my salvation, my tongue shall rejoice in thy righteousness. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise, for thou hast your sacrifice, that you given him with open offerings, thou shalt not be pleased. A sacrifice unto God is a broken spirit, a heart that is broken, a humble God, God will not despise. Do good, O Lord, 
In like a pleasure and desire, not walls of Jerusalem be builded, then should I be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with the relation of one offering, and should I also look upon thine altar, O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come unto thee, turn out thy face away from me, in a day when I am afflicted, incline near to me, and in a day when I call upon thee, quickly hearken unto me, for my days are banished like smoke, and my bones are consumed like wood for the burning. I am smitten like grass, and withered is my heart, for I forgot to eat my bread, by reason of the voice of my groaning, my bone hath cleaved unto my flesh, I am become like a pelican in the wilderness, I am like an owl in a ruined house, I have watched him like a sparrow that sitteth alone upon the housetop. The whole day long mine enemies reproach me, and they that praise me made an oath against me. For before the, the face of thy wrath and thine anger, I ashes like bread, my drink are mingled with weeping. For after uplifting me, thou hast dashed me down. My days like a shadow have declined, and I like grass and withered. But thou, Lord, forever abidest, and thy remembrance is under generation and generation. Thou shalt rise up and have pity upon Zion, for it is time to have compassion on her. Yea, the time is come, for thy servants have taken pleasure in her stones, and they shall feel pity for her dust. And the nation shall fear thy name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth thy glory. For the Lord shall build up Zion, and he shall be seen in his glory. He hath regarded the prayer of the humble, he hath not despised their supplication. Let this be written for another generation, and the people that is being created shall praise the Lord. For he hath looked out from his holy height, the Lord from heaven hath looked upon the earth to hear the groaning of them that be in fetters to loose the sons of the slain, to declare and sign the name of the Lord in his praise in Jerusalem. When the peoples are gathered together, and the kings who serve the Lord, he answered him in the way of his strength, the fewness of my days, declare unto me, take me not away at the half of my days, and generation and generation are thy years. In the beginning, O Lord, thou hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are to work thy hands. They shall perish, but thou abidest, and all like an garment shall grow old, and as a vesture shall thou fold them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. The sons of thy servants shall have their dwelling, and their seed forever shall be guided to right. O Lord, Almighty God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of the righteous seed, who hast made heaven and earth with all the ornament thereof, who has bound the sea by the word of thy commandment. Who has shut up the deep and sealed it by thy terrible and glorious name, whom all things fear and tremble before the face of thy power for the majesty of thy glory cannot be borne nor can the wrathfulness of thy threatening towards sinners be endured but the measure of thy promise is unmeasurable and unsearchable but the mercy of thy promise is unmeasurable and unsearchable for thou art the most high lord who is compassionate long-suffering and plenty of mercy and dost repent of the evils of men thou o lord according to thy great goodness <coughs> has promised repentance and forgiveness to them that have sinned against thee and by the multitude of thy compassions has appointed repentance unto sinners that they may be saved Thou therefore, O Lord God of hosts, hast not appointed repentance to the just to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, which have not sinned against thee, but thou hast appointed repentance unto me that I am a sinner. For I have sinned against thee, I have sinned above the number of the sands of the sea. Mine iniquities are multiplied, O Lord, mine iniquities are multiplied, and I am not worthy to behold and see the height of heaven. For the multitude of my transgressions I am bowed down with many iron bands, and I cannot lift up my head, neither have any release, for I have provoked thy wrath and done evil in thy sight. I did not thy will, neither kept I thy commandments. Now therefore I bow the knee of my heart, beseeching thee of grace. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I acknowledge mine iniquities. Wherefore I humbly beseech thee, forgive me, O Lord. Forgive me, and destroy me not with mine iniquities. Be not angry with me forever by, deserve, by reserving evils for me. Neither condemn me into the most parts of the earth. For thou art the God, even the God of them that repent. And in me thou wilt show all thy goodness. For thou wilt save me, that I am unworthy according to thy great mercy. And I will praise thee forever all the days of my life. For all the hosts of the heavens doth praise thee, and thine is the glory. Unto the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Peace be life, just for all. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal mercy in us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal mercy in us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal mercy in us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, but now and unto the ages of ages. Amen. All holy trinity have mercy in us. Lord, be gracious and our sins, Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, but now and ever unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, which art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy on us, for in the have we put place all our trust. Be not wrath of us, really, nor do thou remember our iniquities. But look upon us even now, since thou art compassionate, and do thou redeem us from our enemies. For thou art our God, and we thy people. All are thy works of thy hands, and upon thy name have we called. Lord, now endeavor into the ages of ages, amen. Do thou open the portal of compassion unto us, O most blessed Theotokos. For hoping in thee, let us not fail, we pray. Through thee may we be delivered from adversities. For thou art the salvation of the Christian race. Lord, have 
mercy, Lord of 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 mercy, Lord
come with thy flesh or righteous soul. <clears throat> and confess to the, the Creator of all, and henceforth refrain from thy former foolishness, and in repentance offer tears to God. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. <laughs> Having ri rivaled the first created Adam in his transgression, <laughs> I recognize myself to be stripped naked of God and of the everlasting kingdom and of delight because of my sins. Have mercy, me, O God, have mercy. <clears throat> Woe is me, O wretched soul, why hast thou made thyself like unto the first Eve? For thou didst, thou didst look evilly and was bitterly wounded, and didst touch the tree, and didst rashly taste for that deceitful food. Have mercy, me, O God, have mercy. The passionate thought in my flesh is become for me a spiritual eve and a place of the visible eve, showing me sweet things and ever giving me to taste of a bitter draught. Have mercy on you, God. Have mercy on me. Rightly was Adam exiled from Eden aforetime, as not having kept thy one commandment, O Savior. <coughs> but what shall I suffer who am ever rejecting thy quickening oracles? Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. O Trinity. Transcendent in essence, who art worshipped in unity, take away from me the heavy yoke of sin, and as thou art compassionate, grant unto me tears of compunction. O now and ever and unto the ages of ages, Amen. O Theotokos, thou hope and protection of them that sing thy praise, take away from me the heavy yoke of sin, and since thou art our pure lady, accept me in repentance. <laughs> Attend, O heaven, and I shall speak, and shall praise Christ, who is come in the flesh from a virgin. Have mercy, me, O God, have mercy. Attend, O heaven, and I shall speak, O earth, give ear unto a voice, repenting unto God and praising Him. Have mercy, O God, have mercy on <clears throat> Attend unto me with thy merciful gaze, O God, and my Savior, and accept mine art in confession. Have mercy, O God, have mercy on me. I have sinned <clears throat> above all men. I alone have sinned against you, but, O Savior, have compassion as God upon thy creation. Have mercy, O God, have mercy on me. Forming the deformity of my passions by my pleasure-loving impulses, I have ruined the beauty of my mind. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. A storm of evil doth encompass me, but, O compassionate Lord, stretch forth thy hand to me also, as thou didst unto Peter. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. <clears throat> I have stained the garment of my flesh, and befouled that which was made in thine image and likeness, O Savior. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have blackened the beauty of my soul with passionate pleasures, and I have wholly changed my mind to mire. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. <clears throat> I have now rent asunder my first robe that my fashioner wove for me from the beginning, and hence I lie naked. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. <clears throat> I have put on the torn raiment which the serpent wove for me by his counsel, and I am ashamed. Have mercy on you, God. Have mercy on <clears throat> The heartless tears do I also bring forward, O compassionate one. Be gracious unto me, O Savior, in thy compassion. Have mercy on you, God. Have mercy on I looked upon the beauty of the tree, and my mind was beguiled, and now I lie naked. And I am ashamed. Have mercy on you, O God. Have mercy on me. All the authors of the passions wrought upon my black. All the authors of the passions wrought upon my back, lengthening out their iniquity against me. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. I praise thee as one in three persons, the God of all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O now, dear <clears throat> unto the ages of ages, Amen. O Immaculate Virgin Theotokos, who alone art praised of all, earnestly entreat that we help you saved. Upon the unshakable rock of thy commandments, O Christ, do thou establish thy truth. Have mercy, O God, have mercy on me. 
the Lord once rained down fire from the Lord and burned up the land of Sodom. Have mercy, O God, have mercy. Flee from the <coughs> flee for safety to the mountain of my soul, like that lot, and in Sagor preserve thyself before the time. Have mercy, O God, have mercy. Flee from the fire, O my soul, flee from burn the burning of Sodom, flee from the destruction of a divine conflagration. Have mercy, O God, have mercy. I alone have sinned against thee. I have sinned above all men, O Christ Savior. Do not despise me. Have mercy, O God, have mercy. Thou art the good shepherd. Seek me out, the lamb, and disregard me not, gone astray. Have mercy, O God, have mercy. Thou art sweet Jesus. Thou art my fashioner. In thee, O Savior, shall I be justified. Have mercy, O God, have mercy. <clears throat> I confess to thee, O Savior, I have sinned against thee beyond measure, but remit, forgive me, since thou art compassionate. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O Trinity and Unity, O God, save us from error and temptations and adversities. O thou and ever and unto the ages of ages, Amen. Rejoice, O God, receiving womb, rejoice, O throne of the Lord. Rejoice, thou mother of our life. <clears throat> Αυκή κονό προφήτη στην έλευση σου, κύριε και φοβήτη. Ότι μέλησε φορδένου κήκεστε και ανθρώπι δείκνεστε και έλεγεν. Ακήκο την ακοή σου και φοβήθη. Δόξα τη δύναμη σου, κύριε. The prophet heard of thy coming, O Lord, and was afraid. <coughs> For thou wast about to be born of a virgin, and shown unto men. And he said, I have heard thy report, and was afraid. Glory to thy power, O Lord. Have mercy, O God, have mercy on me. Overlook not thy handiworks. Despise not that which thou hast formed, O righteous judge. Though as a man I alone have sinned more than any man, O friend of man, yet thou, as the Lord of all, hast authority to forgive sins. Have mercy, me, O God, have mercy on me. The end doth draw nigh, O my soul, it draweth nigh. And thou dost not take care, thou dost not prepare. The time is growing short, arise. The judge is near, even at the doors, as a dream, as a flower. The time of life runneth by, why are we troubled in vain? Have mercy, me, O God, have mercy on me. Rouse thyself, O my soul, consider the deeds that thou hast wrought, and bring them before thine eyes, and let the drops of thy tears stream down. Boldly tell Christ thy works and the thoughts of thy heart, and be justified. Have mercy, me, O God, have mercy on me. There hath been no sin in life, neither practice nor wickedness, wherein I have not transgressed, O Savior, having sinned in mind and in word and in volition and in disposition and will and action, as no one else hath ever done. Have mercy on you, O God, have mercy on you. For this I am condemned, for this am I the wretched one, judged by mine own conscience, which constraineth, me, which constraineth more forcibly than anything in the world. O my judge, redeemer, and knower of my heart, spare and deliver, and save me, the sorry wretch. Have mercy, me, O God, have mercy on me. The latter, which he that was great among the patriarchs saw of old, O my soul, is a pattern of mounting up by action and ascent by knowledge. If therefore thou wouldst live by action, knowledge, and divine vision, be thou made new. Have mercy, me, O God, have mercy on me. <coughs> In his neediness, the patriarch endured the burning heat of the day and bore the frost of night, making gains daily, shepherding, striving, slaving in order to win the two wives. Have mercy, O God, have mercy on me. By the two wives, I understand action and knowledge and divine vision. In Leah, action as having many children and Rachel, knowledge as much toiling. For without labors of my soul, neither action nor divine vision shall prosper. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. I confess thee to be God, 
indivisible in essence, unconfused in persons, the one Godhead in Trinity, as being of the same sovereignty and of one throne, I cry to thee that great song, which in the highest is thrice sung in hymns. Both now and ever, unto the ages of ages. Amen. <clears throat> Thou both give, givest birth and art virgin still, and through both thou remainest by nature a virgin. He that was born maketh the laws of nature new, and the womb bringeth forth without travail. Wherever God willeth, the order of nature is overcome, for he, do, for he doeth whatsoever he willeth. <coughs> Rising early in the night, I pray, O friend of man, enlighten and direct me in thy commandments, <coughs> and teach me, O Savior, to do thy will. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I have ever passed my life in night, for the night of sin has become darkness and deep mist unto me, but show me forth as the son of the day, O Savior. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. In imitating Reuben, hapless as I am, I have brought lawless and unjust counsel against God the Most High, defiling my bed as he did his father's. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. I confess unto thee, O Christ King, I have sinned. I have sinned like Joseph's brethren of old, who sold the fruit of purity and chastity. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The righteous soul, the sweet Joseph, was given and sold into slavery by his kindred as a type of the Lord. But thou, O soul, art completely sold to thine evil works. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Imitate Joseph's righteous and chaste mind, a wretched and reprobate soul, and wax not wanton, ever transgressing by deceitful impulses. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Though Joseph once dwelt in a pit, O sovereign Lord, yet it was a type of thy burial and arising. But shall I ever offer such a thing unto thee? Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The O Trinity. Do we glorify the one God? Holy, holy, holy art thou, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, simple essence, the unity ever worshipped. But oh, now, now the ages of ages, amen. from thee, God, who created the ages, was clad in my clay of inviolate virgin mother, who knewest not man, and he united man's nature to himself. With my whole heart have I cried unto the compassion of God, and he hearkened unto me from nether Mercedes, and he brought forth my life up out of corruption. God, have mercy on me. The tears of mine eyes and the groanings from the depths do I sincerely offer, O Savior. As my heart crieth out, O God, I have sinned against thee. Be gracious unto me. Have mercy, O God, have mercy on me. Thou, my soul, hast revolted from thy Lord like Dathan and Abiran, but cry out, Spare from the most Hades, lest the chasm of the earth completely cover thee up. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Maddened like a frenzied heifer, O my soul, thou art become like Ephraim, like a gazelle from the snare, save thy life by taking wing upon action and mind and divine vision. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. The hand of Moses, my soul, shall be our surety, how God can whiten and cleanse the leper's life and despair not of thyself, Though thou be stricken with leprosy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. I am a trinity, simple and indivisible, distinguished in persons, and a unity united in nature. Thus saith the Father, the Son, and the Divine Spirit. O now and ever and unto the ages of ages, amen. Thy womb bear God for us, formed as we are, importune him, as the creator of all the Setokos, that by the intercessions we may be justified. <coughs> My soul, my soul, arise, wherefore dost thou slumber? The end is drawing nigh, and thou shalt be troubled. Arise, thou. Of therefore, 
the Christ God may spare thee, for he is everywhere present and filleth his thy commandment, for I have advanced in sins, and I have, added, uh, I have added wounds to my blows. But do thou thyself have mercy on me, since thou art compassionate, O God of our fathers. Have mercy, me, O God, have mercy. I have confessed to thee, my judge, the hidden things of my heart. Behold my lowliness. See mine affliction, and attend now unto my judgment. And do thou thyself have mercy on me, since thou art compassionate, O God of our fathers. Have mercy, me, O God, have mercy on me. Once, when Saul lost his father's asses of my soul, he found by the way his election to a kingdom. But see that thou not, but see that thou forget not thyself, preferring thy brutish desires to the kingdom of God. Have mercy, O God. Have mercy on me. Even if David, the ancestor of God, doubly sinned of old of my soul, pierced with the arrow of adultery, <coughs> and struck by the peer and struck by the spear of the penalty for murder, yet thou thyself art diseased with things more grievous than his in thy voluntary impulses. Have mercy, O God, have mercy. David once joined iniquity to iniquity, for he mingled adultery with murder, then straightway showed double repentance. But thou hast wrought things more wicked still in my soul without repenting before God. Have mercy, O God, have mercy on me. David once set up a hymn as upon a pillar, composing it as an image through which he re reproved the deed he had done, crying out, Have mercy on me, for against thee only I have sinned, the God of all. Do thou thys thyself cleanse me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O simple and indivisible Trinity, O consubstantial and holy unity, light and lights, and three holies, and one holy. Lord, and we and three holies and one holy God, the Trinity is hymned, but praise, O my soul, and glorify the life and lives of the God of all. O thou never unto the ages of ages, Amen. We hymn thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, O Mother of God, 
For thou gavest birth unto one of the indivisible Trinity, the one Son and God, and thou thyself hast opened up the heavens unto us who are on earth. On stati e ora non doxa zusi, ke friti ta keruvim, ke ta serafim, pas apnoi ke kisis, imni te vlogite, ke iperipsute ispandas tu se onal. Him whom the host of heaven glorify, and before whom the cherubim and the seraphim do tremble. O oh, every breath in all creation, praise, bless, and supremely exalt unto all the ages. Have mercy, O God, have mercy on me. I have sinned, O Savior, have mercy. Rouse my mind to conversion, receive me who repent, take pity on me who cry, I have sinned against thee. Save me, I have wrought iniquity, have mercy on me. Have mercy, O God, have mercy on me. Once Elias the charioteer, <coughs> mounting upon the chariot of the virtues, was taken up as though to heaven above earthly things. Consider his ascent, therefore, of my soul. Have mercy, O God, have mercy on me. Eliseus once received double grace from the Lord when he took up Elias' mantle. But thou, my soul, hast not partaken of this grace because of thine incontinence. Have mercy, me, O God, have mercy on me. The stream of Jordan was parted hither and thither of old through Eliseus by Elias' mantle. <coughs> but thou, my soul, hast not partaken of this grace because of thine incontinence. Have mercy, me, O God, have mercy on me. Of old, the Shumanite woman entertained the righteous Eliseus with good will, but thou, my soul, hast taken into thy house neither stranger nor wayfarer. Wherefore thou shalt be cast out of the bride chamber, lamenting. Have mercy, me, O God, have mercy on me. Thou hast imitated Gehazi's defiled mind at all times of my miserable soul. Thrust away his love of money, even now in old age. Flee from the fire of Gehenna by departing from thine evil deeds. We bless Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, O Lord. O beginless Father, co beginless Son, O good Comforter, upright Spirit, O begetter of the Word of God, Word of the Unoriginal Father, O living and creating Spirit, O Trinity and Unity, have mercy on me. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages, Amen. As from dye of royal purple, O Immaculate One, the noetic purple robe, even the flesh of Emmanuel was woven in thy womb. Wherefore, in truth, we honor thee as the Theotokos. Asporus ellipseos, otokos an erminetos, vitros an andru, akhoros ikisis, te ugari genisis, ken opitas visis, vios e parse gene, os teonifon mitera, orthodoxos megalinomen. Inexplicable is the childbearing of a seedless conception. Without corruption is the conception of a mother who knew not man. For the birth of God doth make nature new. <coughs> Wherefore all we the generations do magnify the unorthodox manner as the mother of our God. Have mercy, me, O God, have mercy on me. The mind is wounded, the body is enfeebled, the spirit aileth, the word is grown weak. Life hath been put to death, the end is at the doors. Wherefore, O miserable soul, what shalt thou do when the judge cometh to search out thy deeds? Have mercy on God, have mercy on me. I have brought forth Moses' account of the creation of the world of my soul, and from thence all the covenant in scripture which telleth thee of the righteous and of the unjust, of whom thou, O soul, hast imitated the latter, and not the former, having sinned against God. Have mercy, me, O God, have mercy on me. The law is grown weak, <coughs> the gospel is fallen idle, and the scriptures is neglected in thee. The prophets have lost their strength, and so hath every word of the righteous. Thy wounds, O my soul, are multiplied, and there is no physician to make thee whole. Have mercy, me, O God, have mercy on me. <clears throat> I bring the examples from the new scripture, my soul, to lead thee unto compunction. Therefore, emulate the righteous, 
Turn away from sinners and make Christ gracious by prayers and fasting, by purity and, mod and modesty. Have mercy, me, O God. Have mercy on me. Christ became man, calling thieves and harlots unto repentance. Repent, O my soul. The door of the kingdom is already opened, and the transformed Pharisees and publicans and adulterers are seizing it ahead of thee. Have mercy, me, O God. Have mercy on me. Christ became a babe, and in the flesh conversed with me, and of his own will fulfilled all that pertained to our nature, apart from sin, showing thee beforehand of my soul an example, and an image of his own condescension. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. Christ saved magi, invited shepherds, showed forth multitudes of infants as martyrs. He glorified an elder and an aged widow, whom thou hast not emulated, O my soul, neither their deeds, nor their life but one to thee when thou art judged. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me. When the Lord had fasted forty days in the wilderness, he afterward hungered, showing his human nature. Be not despondent, O my soul, if the enemy attack thee, but let him be beaten far away from thee with prayer and fasting. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us glorify the Father, <coughs> let us supremely exalt the Son. Let us faithfully worship the Divine Spirit, even the indivisible Trinity, a unity according to essence, is light and lights, and life and lives, giving life and protecting and enlightening the ends of the world. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Protect thy city, O all pure and birth giver of God, for in thee doth she faithfully reign, in thee is she made strong and conquering through thee. She runneth every temptation and spoileth her adversaries, and governeth her obedient commonwealth. O holy hierarchy, I do intercede in our behalf. O venerable and thrice blessed Father Andrew, thou shepherd of Crete, cease not to pray for them that sing thy praise, that we who ever under thy memory may be rescued from all manner of wrath, affliction, corruption, and failings. <coughs> Oh, Lord of hosts. 
us be thou with us, for we have no other help in affliction save thee. O Lord of hosts, have mercy on us. <laughs> Praise him with the sound of trumpet, praise him with the psaltery and harp. O Lord of hosts, be thou with us, for we have no other help in affliction save thee. O Lord of hosts, have mercy on us. <laughs> And for this quick organo, Kyrie ton dinameon, Metimon genu, Alon karektosu, Voithon et lipses inu kehomen, Kyrie ton dinameon, Praise with tuneful symbols, praise with symbols of jubilation. Let every breath praise the Lord. O Lord of hosts, be thou with us, for we have no other help in affliction save thee. O Lord of hosts, have mercy on us. <laughs> They sent us intercessors and thy goodness to show compassion upon this on us. How should we dare, O Savior, to praise thee, whom the angels bless unceasingly, O thou who knows our hearts, spare our souls, both now and ever and unto the ages of ages of men. Great are the multitude of my defenses, O Theotokos. To thee have I fled, O pure one, and implore salvation. Visit mine ailing soul and intercede with thy Son and our God, that he may grant me forgiveness for the grievous deeds which I have committed, O only blessed one. Mm, o holy Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of
Go to mercy, 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 go to mercy. Thou who at all times and at every hour in heaven and earth that worship and glorify to Christ God, our long suffering, plenteous and mercy, most compassionate, who loves the righteousness, mercy and sinners, who call us all to salvation through the promise of good things to come. Receive all our prayers to this hour and guide our life towards the commandments. Sanctify our souls, may change our bodies, correct our thoughts, purify our intentions, and deliver us from every sorrow, evil and pain, compass us about the holy angels, are guided and guarded by their array, may attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the heaven of glory, for blessed are thou unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, but now and unto the ages of ages. Amen. More honorable than a cherubim, beyond compare, more glorious than a seraphim, thee without corruption, give us birth to God the Word, the very third to proceed to be magnified in the name of the Lord, Master Bless. Amen. O Lord and Master of my life, has purified all this curiosity, ambition, and idle talk, give me not. But a spirit of chastity, humility, patience, and love bestow upon me, thy servant. Yea, O Lord King, grant me to see mine own failings and not to condemn my brother, for blessed are thou unto the ages of ages. O God, be gracious unto me, 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 O oh God, be gracious unto me, a sinner. O oh God, be gracious unto me, a sinner. O oh God, be gracious unto me, a sinner. O oh God, be gracious unto me, a sinner. O oh God, be gracious unto me, a sinner. O oh God, be gracious unto me, a sinner. O oh God, be gracious unto me, a sinner. O oh God, be gracious unto me, a sinner, and have mercy. Yea, O Lord King, grant me to see my own failings and not to condemn my brother. For blessed are thou unto the ages of ages. Amen. Just for the Holy God, Holy Mary, Holy Mother Mercy, and us for the God, Holy Mary, Holy Mother Mercy, and us for the God, Holy Mary, Holy Mother Mercy, and us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, for now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O oh, Holy Trinity, have mercy on us, Lord, be gracious unto our sins, Master, pardon our iniquities, Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, for now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and we just not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord of mercy, 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 O oh, spotless, undefiled, and corrupt, immaculate, pure virgin, lady, bride of God, who when I wonders conceive me, has the united God, a word of man, and join the outcast, nature of our race, to heavenly things, O only hope of the hopeless, and succor of thee in battle, the ready help of them, and have recourse to thee, and refuge of all Christians, to pour me not the sinner of the accursed one, who have all together made myself unprofitable by shameful thoughts, words, and deeds, and with the heart's ease of life's pleasure, and becometh all in mine, but as a mother of the man befriending God, do thou in man befriending wise take pity upon me, a sinner and prodigal, and receive my supplication offered to thee on unclean lips. And using thy boldness as mother, entreat thy son, our master and lord, that he may open even unto me the loving compassion of his goodness, and that overlook my innumerable trespasses, and return me to repentance, and make me the approved doer of his commandments. And be thou ever with me as art, merciful and compassionate, and the lover of good being in this life, a fervent protector and help, to defend me from the assaults of adversaries, and guide me into salvation. And in the hour of my departure, to care for my wretched soul, and drive far, it, drive far from it the dark countenances of evil demons, and in a terrible day of judgment, to deliver me from eternal torment. And show me forth as an heir of the unspeakable glory of thy Son and our God. This be my Lord and my Lady Most Holy Theotokos, by the mediation and help, through the grace and love for man, of thine only begotten Son, our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ, to whom is do all glory, honor, and worship, with his Father, which is without beginning, and all, in his all holy good and life-creating spirit, now and ever unto the ages of ages. Amen. And grant us a master when we go to sleep, repose of body and soul, and keep us from the murky slumbering of sin, and in every dark voluptuousness of night. Calm the violence of the passions, quench the fiery, fiery darts of the evil, which are treacherously hurled against us. Subdue the rebellions of our flesh, and cradle every earthly and material thought. And grant unto us, O God, a watchful mind, a chaste thought, a sober heart, a light, a sleep life, and free from all satanic fantasies. And raise us up to the hour of prayer, establishing thy commandments, and holding the remembrance of thy judgments unshakable within us. Grant us to him thy glory all the night long, that we may bless, praise and bless and glorify thine all honorable and majestical name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and unto the ages of ages. Amen. 
Uh, most glorious ever virgin, blessed is the Lord, the presenter of prayer to the Son and our God, and pray that through thee he would save our souls. My hope is the Father, my refuge, the Son, my shelter, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, glory be to thee. Unto thee do I commit my every hope of Mother God, guard me unto thy shelter. We deem worthy to hear the Holy Gospel. Let us beseech the Lord our God. Mercy, Lord, mercy, Lord, mercy. Wisdom of Christ. Let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be unto all. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. The Lord said, "Take heed that ye be not deceived." For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. For these things must, must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these things, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends. And some of you they shall cause to be put to death. <coughs> and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not an hair of your head perish. And your patience possess ye your souls. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let them that are in the countries enter thereinto. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations and with perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then, shall there, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. And he spake to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the leaves and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So likewise ye... When ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Amen, I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. <laughs> and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. And to stand before the Son of Man.
O Lord, our Master, plenteous in mercy by the intercessions of our Immaculate Field, Tocos, Nova Virgin Mary, by the power of the honor of life, giving cross, by the protection of the venerable heavenly bodiless powers, and supplications of the venerable glorious prophet for and Baptist John. <coughs> O the holy glorious and all famed apostles, Peter and Paul, the chiefs of the twelve and the seventy, and our Father among the saints, the great hearts, the universal teachers, by the great Gregory the theologian, John Chrysostom, Athanasian, Cyril, John the Alms, Giver, Patriarchs of Alexandria, Nicholas, Archbishop of Myron, Lisha, Spirit on Bishop of Trimethus, the Wonder Workers, O the holy glorious, great martyrs, George, the trophy bearer, Demetrius, the Mercy, Jimmy, Theodore, the Tyrus, Theodore, the Commander, Mamas, Manas, the Wonder Workers, O the holy forty martyrs of Sebastia, O the holy sacred martyrs of Olympus, and Eleutherius, O the holy glorious and traveling victorious martyrs. O righteous and God-bearing fathers, come to know of Volkred, of Sir Promisorov, Herman of Alaska, Innocent, and Juvenali of Alaska, take on the Confessor, Patriarch of Moscow, Peter the Elliot, of Father Spung, Saints, and Confessors. <coughs> of our righteous mothers, Xenia, Tharsi, the fools, for Christ's sake, of our holy patron, John Maximovich, Archbishop of San Francisco, the wonder worker, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God. Joy. Of the holy forty-two martyrs who contest in Amoria, Theodore, Constantine, Calixtus, Theophilus, Pastorius, and those with them, and our righteous father Archidius, our righteous father Ezekiel, the wonder worker of Galatia, whose memory we keep and of all the saints, make acceptable our supplication. Amen. Grant us the forgiveness of our offenses. Amen. Shelter us under the shelter of thy wings. Amen. Drive far from us every enemy and adversary. Amen. Make peace for our life. Lord, have mercy on us and on thy world and save our souls since our good and the friend of man. Amen. Holy Father, and forgive me, sir. Let us pray for the peace of the world, Lord, for mercy. pious and orthodox Christians, Lord, for our Father and Archbishop Demetrius, and the Son of Dean, all our brotherhood in Christ, Lord, for our absent fathers and brethren, for those who minister and minister unto us, for those who hate us and those who love us, for those who enjoy us and worthy to pray for them, for the release of captives, for the safety of those who travel by sea, land, and air, for those that are lying ill. Let us pray also for the abundance of the fruits of the earth and for the soul of every orthodox Christian. Let us bless the pious kings, the orthodox bishops, the founders of the sacred monastery, parents, teachers, all of our fathers and brethren that have gone to the rest before us, the orthodox here and everywhere, pious they to rest. Eternal be their memory. And let us say also for ourselves. What a mercy, what a mercy, what a mercy. The reading is a continuation of the writings of Abad the Rathis of Gaza. Blessed is our God, always, now, never, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Instruction one, regarding abandonment of the world. In the beginning, when God created man, he placed him in paradise, as Holy Scripture says, having adorned him with all the virtues, commanding him not to eat from the tree in the midst of paradise. And he lived in the bliss of paradise in prayer, in the contemplation of God, with every honor and glory, his senses being healthy and abiding in a natural state, exactly as he was created. For God created man in his image, that is, immortal and independent, adorned by every virtue. When, however, he disobeyed God and ate from the tree from which God had forbidden him to eat, he was then cast out of paradise, since he fell from his natural state and found himself in an unnatural state, that is, subject to sin, avidity, the love of pleasures of this world, and to the other passions that overcame him, becoming indeed wholly enslaved by these on account of this contravention. Henceforth, therefore, little by little, various forms of evil began to increase and death ruled. Nowhere did one encounter reverence for God. Everywhere there was ignorance of God. Only some few, as the fathers tell us, knew God, prompted by an innate moral law. Such were Abraham and the other patriarchs, Noah and Job. And in a word, few and far between were those who knew God. For at that time the devil unfurled all of his evil, since sin reigned. 
It was then that there began the worship of idols, belief in many gods, magic spells and charms, murder, and the rest of the devil's evil doing. Thus God, who is all good, thereupon took pity on his creature and gave, through Moses, a written code of law in which some things on the one hand were forbidden and others on the other hand were permitted. This is what I mean to say. By these commandments he declares, this you shall do, that you shall not do. He gave the commandments and clearly stated, The Lord thy God is one Lord, so as to divert the minds of men away from polytheism. And again he said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Everywhere he proclaims that there is one God and one Lord, and that there is none besides him. For by saying, Love the Lord thy God, he showed that there is one God and one Lord. Yet once more in the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, he says, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve, and thou shalt cleave to him, and by his name shalt thou swear. He concludes thusly, You shall have no other gods, nor any likeness whatever of me, whether in heaven or above, <clears throat> whether in heaven above or on the earth below. For at the time they worshipped every kind of created thing. So God, who is good, gave the law as an aid to the return of man and to rectify evil, even though evil was not set aright. He sent prophets, but even they were unable to do so. Indeed, evil prevailed, as Isaiah says, neither wound nor bruise nor festering ulcer is healed. It is not possible to apply plaster, nor oil, nor bandages. We might say that evil is found not just in one form and in a certain part of the body, but in the whole body, dominating the entire soul and affecting all of its powers. There is no, slave, there is no salve or the like to cure it, as though to say, Everything was enslaved by sin, and everything was held under its sway. As Jeremiah says, We tried to heal Babylon, but she was not healed. That is, we have made known thy name, we have proclaimed thy commandments, thy benefactions, and thy promises. We have foretold the uprisings of enemies against Babylon, and yet she is not healed. That is, she did not repent, showed no fear, did not set aside her wickedness. Just as it says in another place, she has not received accepted correction. <clears throat> that is, counsel and teaching. The psalm tells us, Their soul abhorred all manner of food, noetic nourishment, and they drew near unto the gates of spiritual death. Finally, therefore, God, who is good and loves mankind, sent down his only begotten Son. For only God could now cure man and give him the strength to rise up from such great malevolence. And the prophets were not ignorant of this, for thus did David clearly say, Thou that sittest upon the cherubim, show thyself, stir up thy might, and come to save us. And in another place, bow down the heavens, O Lord, and come down. In so many other passages like these, and all the other prophets, each in his own way, said many such things, sometimes imploring God to come down, at other times foretelling his advent precisely because it was disclosed to them that he was assuredly coming down. Indeed, our Lord came, becoming a man on our behalf, that he might cure, as St. Gregory says, like with like, soul with soul, flesh with flesh. For the Lord became holy man, save for sin. He took our very substance, took on the whole of our human nature, and became a new Adam in the image of him that created him. Indeed, he restored human nature and wholly made anew our fallen senses as they had been created in the beginning. He renewed man who had fallen freeing by becoming man, him who had been completely enslaved by sin and who was unwillingly warped by it. For man had been led astray forcefully and against his will by the enemy, Satan. Even those who did not wish to sin, sinned, as it were, by force, as the Apostle Paul, speaking of our, pa of our persons, says, For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. God, becoming man for our sake, freed man from the tyranny of the enemy, for he divested Satan of his power, crushing all his, of his might, rescuing, rescuing us from our servitude to him, from our total submission to him, unless, of course, we should intentionally wish to sin. Indeed, as he has said, he gave us the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and that he cleansed us from all sin by baptism, for holy baptism forgives and expunges every sin. And again, God, who is good, knowing our weakness, and foreknowing that after our baptism we would sin, as Holy Scripture says, 
the imagination of man is intently bent upon evil things from his youth, gave us in his goodness holy commandments to purify ourselves so that if we wish we might once more by keeping by the keeping of these commandments be cleansed not only from our sins but from these passions of ours for passions are one thing and sins another passions are anger vanity sensuality hatred evil desire and other such things but sins are the actions that result from these passions to wit when one allows himself to react to the passions when with his body he brings to fruition what his passions dictate. Of course, it is possible, <clears throat> of course it is possible to have passions, yet not to act on them. Christ our God gave us, therefore, as I said, commandments that cleanse us from our passions themselves, from those evil dispositions that exist in the inward man. Indeed, he endows man with the ability to distinguish good from evil, he quickens him, he shows him the things that cause him to sin, and he tells him, The law has said, Thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say, Do not even desire to do so. The law has said, Thou shalt not kill, but I say, Do not even become angry with another. For if you desire to commit adultery, yet on this particular day avoid it, the desire to not... For if you desire to commit adultery, yet on this particular day avoid it, the desire to do so will not stop pestering you until it provokes you to act on this passion. If you come to anger and rise up violently against your brother, you will also fall to calumniation and afterwards to the desire to do him harm, and thus bit by bit come to the point of murdering him. <coughs> Once again the law says, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. The Lord, however, teaches us not only to accept with long suffering the blows of those who slap us, but humbly <coughs> to turn the other cheek. For at the time, the goal of this commandment was to teach us not to do that which we did not want to suffer. Thus it stopped us from doing an evil thing for fear of the same evil befalling us. But now, as I said, what is asked of us is to uproot from our souls every passion, whether it be hatred or vanity or sensuality or the love of glory, ambition, or whatever other passion. In a word, the aim of our Master, Jesus Christ, is to teach us how we arrived at these sins, and for what cause we, descend, we descended into these evil days. First of all, he liberated us, as I have already said, by holy baptism, bestowing on us the forgiveness of sins, giving us the power to do good, if we so wish, and not to be goaded, as it were, into wickedness. Indeed, he who is a slave to sins is pushed and pulled by them, as it is said, everyone is bound in the chains of his own sins. Afterwards, he teaches us by his holy commandments how to be cleansed from the very passions, that we might not fall through them to the same sins. Hence, he shows us how one lapses into haughty and contumelious behavior, and indeed disobedience to these commandments of God. In this way, he indicates to us the cure and how we can be obedient and be saved. And what then is the cause for and what is the therapy of this haughty and contumelious behavior? Heed what our Lord says. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Note that here, succinctly and in a few words, he has shown us the root and cause of all evil and the medicine for it, the cause of all good. He shows us how pride overcame us, and that we can find mercy in no other way save by its antithesis, which is humility. For pride spawns haughty and contumelious behavior and ruinous disobedience, just as humility spawns obedience and the salvation of our souls. I mean by this, of course, real humility, not simply humility in words and external manners, but that humility of actual disposition that is cultivated in the heart and mind. This is what is meant when the Lord says, I am meek and lowly in heart. He then, who wishes to find true rest for his soul, let him learn humility, and thus he will see that in it there is to be found every joy, every glory, and all things serene, just as he will find in arrogance every contrary thing. How did we come to all of these afflictions? Why did we fall to all of this squalor? Is it not from our pride? Is it not from our foolishness? Is it not because we so greatly gave ourselves over to our evil intentions? Is it not because we have preferred to impose our embittered will? But why? 
Was not man created in a place of every enjoyment, every joy, all serenity, of all glory? Did he not find himself in paradise? God said to him, You shall not do this. Yet he did it. Do you see the pride? Do you see the obstinacy? Do you see the, re the recalcitrance? Indeed, when God saw this insolence, he said, He is foolish. He cannot be joyful. Unless he goes through hard times, he will in a short time go astray, and he will be completely lost. For if he does not learn what affliction is, he will also fail to learn what rest for the soul is. God thus gave man what he deserved and cast him out of paradise. He gave man over to his self-love and to his desires, that these might wear him down in order to teach him not to have trust in himself, but in the commandments of God, that this tribulation, by way of disobedience, might show him the rest of soul brought about by obedience, as the prophet says, an apostasy shall correct thee. However, God in his goodness, as I have repeatedly said, did not abandon his creature, but again urged him on, yet again gave him succor. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, as though to say, You have tired yourself, you have suffered tribulation, you have been you have had experience with the evil results of your recalcitrance. Come back now, knowing the magnitude of your weakness and your contempt so as to find your rest and glory. Come, live in humility, you who were deadened by pride. Learn from me that I am meek and humble of heart, and your souls will find rest. Alas, my brothers, what evil pride does? Ah, but imagine what humility can accomplish. Why were all of these adventures necessary? Indeed, if from the beginning man had humbled himself and done obedience to God, keeping his commandments, he would not have fallen. Even after sinning, man was given a chance to repent and to be shown mercy, and yet he persisted in his pride. For God came to him, saying, Adam, where are you? And not, from what glory have you fallen, and to what misery have you been reduced? And then he asked him, Why did you sin? Why did you violate my commandment? Giving him an opportunity to say simply, Forgive me. But no forgive me was to be found. Nowhere was there humility, nowhere repentance. But the opposite, Adam says, it was the woman whom you gave me. It was the woman whom you gave to me. He does not say my wife misled me, but the woman whom you gave me, as if wishing to say a calamity that you brought down on my head. For so it is, my brothers, when a man does not make it a habit to correct himself, he will not even hesitate to consider God himself the source of evil. Turning to Eve, God says, Why did you not heed the commandment? It was as though he were asking of her, At least you can ask forgiveness from me, so as to humble your soul and find mercy. But once more, nowhere was there a forgive me to be had. And she answered, saying, The serpent beguiled me, as if wishing to say, If he is the one who brought me to sin, what blame have I? What are you doing, you hapless wretches? Make a prostration. Acknowledge your error. Show sorrow for your nakedness. However, neither of them saw fit to reproach himself, neither was found to have, any, to have even the least humility. See clearly, then, how we came to our present state. Behold to which and how many evils we have been brought by self-justification, by following our own aims, by satisfying our own wills, which are surely the offspring of intractable pride, exactly in the same way that denying ourselves, not trusting our own judgment, and dis disesteeming our own will are the offspring of humility. Through the latter, one is rendered worthy to recover, to rediscover himself, to return to what is natural by way of the purification which is granted by the keeping of the commandments of Christ. Because without humility, one cannot obey the commandments, nor can he achieve anything good, as Abba Mark says, without contrition of heart, it is completely impossible for one to be delivered from vice, wholly impossible to acquire virtue. Therefore, when one embraces the commandments with contrition of heart, one is delivered from wickedness, acquires virtue, and ultimately, once again, finds his rest. Since all of the saints thus understood this, they took care, with every sort of humble training, to unite themselves with God. Indeed, there were some who so loved God that, after baptism, they not only cut themselves off from actions inspired by the passions, but sought to conquer the very passions themselves and to become passionless. Such were St. Anthony, St. Pacomius, and other <coughs> God-bearing fathers. It was thereby their goal to be cleansed, as the Apostle Paul says, from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, knowing that by the keeping of the commandments, as we have already said, 
the soul is cleansed, and, we might say, the mind is purified, recovering its light and coming back to its natural state. Indeed, the commandment of the Lord is bright, enlightening the eyes. They understood that as long as one is on the earth, it is not easy to achieve virtue. So they devised for themselves a special and unconventional way of life, an unusual life, I mean, of course, the monastic life, and began to flee from the world and to dwell in the wilderness with fasting, sleeping on the ground, holding vigil and other ascetic feats, affecting a total renunciation of country, relations, money, and possessions. In short, they crucified within themselves every worldly vision, and they not only kept the commandments but offered gifts to God. I'll explain how. The commandments of God are given to all Christians, and every Christian is required to keep them. They are the tribute, one might say, that we owe to the king. Who can say, I owe no tribute to the king, yet escape admonition? There are, however, great and luminous persons in the world who not only pay tribute to the king, but who also offer up gifts to him, and they are thus considered worthy of great honor, benefactions, and positions of high rank. Such then were the fathers who not only observed the commandments, but also offered gifts to God. Now, virginity and poverty are gifts. These are not commandments, but are offerings. For nowhere is it written, do not marry, do not bear children, nor again did Christ, when he said, sell all that thou hast, give this as a command. Indeed, when the rich young ruler approached him, saying, Teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? He answered, Thou knowest the commandments. Thou shalt, also, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, and so on. And when the young man said, All these things I have kept from my youth, he added, If you wish to be perfect, go and sell what you have, and give it to the poor, etc. He did not say, Sell what you have, as though giving an order, but as counsel. For if you wish, does not signal an order, but advice. As we said then, the fathers offered as gifts to God, along with other virtues, chastity and the renunciation of personal possessions, and just as we stated earlier, crucified the world within themselves, struggling thereby to crucify themselves to the world, as the Apostle Paul says. The world has been crucified in me, and I to the world. What now is the difference between my crucifying the world within me and my being crucified to the world? The world is crucified for a man when he denies the world and becomes a monastic, when he leaves parents, money, personal properties and affairs, and his professional dealings. It is thus that the world is crucified, for he abandons it. This is what the apostle meant when he said, The world has been crucified in me. Afterwards, he adds, And I to the world. But how is a man crucified to the world? He is crucified when, having been liberated from external things, he struggles against enjoyments themselves, against his very desires for material objects, against what he wills, and puts, to, and puts the passions to death. It is then that he is also crucified to the world, being made worthy to declare with the apostle, the world has been crucified in me, and I to the world. The fathers, therefore, as we said, having crucified the world within themselves, took care in their struggles to crucify themselves to the world. It seems to us that we, have been, that we have crucified the world within ourselves when we left it and came to the monastery. Yet, we do not wish to crucify ourselves to the world, for we still seek after its pleasures, because we are still passionately tied to it, scrambling for its glory, for food, for clothing. If there is some useful tool in the monastery, we come to pine for it and allow it to take the place within us of the desire for money, exactly as Abba Zosima said. Thus, it may seem to us that we have renounced the world and abandoned worldly things. Nevertheless, having come to the monastery, we still, and with the most insignificant things, indulge our worldly desires. This we suffer because of our injudiciousness, since, having left great and valuable things, we, feel we fuel our passions with various objects of zero value. Indeed, each of us has given up what he had. He who had great possessions, his great possessions. He with only some assets his livelihood, each according to his means. So coming to the monastery, as I said, we feed our desires with trivial and worthless things. We should not behave thusly, but rather precisely in the same way that we have denied the world and all that w which is of the world, we should reject as well our striving for worldly things, knowing well what meaning 
knowing well what meaning that rejection has, why we came to the monastery, and the meaning of the monastic garb that we have assumed. In accordance with these things, we should establish ourselves in a monastic life and struggle as our fathers have taught us. The prayers of the Holy Fathers of Jesus Christ, the God of mercy, and the Jesus. The prayers of our Holy Master, Lord Jesus Christ, the God of mercy, and us, and save us. Amen. <laughs> Who in faith we are unto thee, with thy mighty hand dost thou shelter, O pure one as thou art good, knowing outside we who sin as a perpetual intercession with, with our God in dangers and sorrows, we who have been burdened down with our abundant sins, Mother of God in the highest, wherefore we all fall down before thee, rescue us thy servants from adversities. <laughs> Ton kata febon don en fiesti ti krate a suhiri alin garu ke komen amar toli prosteon en kindi nis ke tripsasin ai mesiti an i kata kam to meni poptes maton polon miter tu theu tu ipsisu. O then si prospipo men rise, pae si speris tase ostus dulusu. The prayers of my fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. The prayers of our holy master, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. 
Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us.